So hi, everyone. I'm Anna from Supermetrics, and I am a marketing analytics consultant here at Supermetrics. I will be hosting today's webinar and talking to you about HubSpot data from the marketing analytics perspective and how you can combine it with different data sources. And I have been working at Supermetrics for maybe six or seven years now. I've had a lot of different roles. And now I'm focusing on hosting webinars like this one. I also host our podcast, The Marketing Analytics Show. And as a day-to-day -day job, I build custom data warehouses for all our clients and work in other custom projects. And with that, I'm going to give the mic to Erica. Erica, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Anna. Uh, my name is Erica Gradnia. I'm based in Denver, and I work for HubSpot. I've been working for HubSpot for just over six years now, uh, and like Anna, I've had a lot of different roles at HubSpot, um, most recently in our marketing department, um, where I manage a team of growth marketers. Actually, one of my teammates is here to help answer some questions about HubSpot. Um, but we specifically focus on driving demand through conversational marketing and building out a chatbot strategy uh, on our website that drives demand to our sales team. Amazing. And Erica is the perfect, perfect co-host for this webinar. We're going to talk a lot about the customer journey here. So this is something very relevant to you. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and jump over to the agenda, what we're going to cover today. We are first going to take a look at HubSpot, how it's structured, and what kind of information you can get from different hubs, then how you can succeed with HubSpot, because it is indeed a very, very powerful tool for all your marketing journey mapping. And then we're going to take a look at how you can monitor HubSpot campaign performance, what are the things you should be paying attention to. And next, we will cover the HubSpot metrics you should be tracking, how they're tracked, and how to pick the best tool for your reporting. And then we'll finalize it with how HubSpot and Supermetrics can work better together and what can you get out. And at the very, very end of the webinar, we have a very sweet deal for all the attendees. So please don't leave. Stay with us. And of course, you will be able to ask any questions you want at the end. We will be able to answer it live. And in the meantime, if you have a question while we're talking, please feel free to post it in a chat and either our teammates will help you and answer the question, or then we will take it closer to the end of the webinar. Okay, excellent. And... Uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Erica, who will talk more about HubSpot and how you can become successful with it. Yeah, thanks, Anna. Um, so I'm curious in the chat to hear from folks if we have any HubSpot users here. Uh, feel free to add that in the chat, but I will um, give you some background on the HubSpot ecosystem and what you can do uh, with our platform. So a quick overview, HubSpot is a CRM platform. Uh, and it connects everything for scaling companies that they need to deliver a best-in-class customer experience um, all in, in one place. So you can see this top section here is to represent our CRM, um, which is really the foundation of the HubSpot platform. And on top of that, you can really mix and match depending on your, your company's needs, um, these different hubs. So we have a CMS hub, a sales hub, service hub, marketing hub, and operations hub. Um, and this has expanded over my time at HubSpot. We've continued to add these hubs for our customers' needs. Um, specifically today, what I'm going to be talking about is more around the marketing hub and the CRM um, platform as well. Um, the beauty here is that you can really mix and match each of these, and uh, they're powerful as one hub alone or all together. All right, so the CRM uh, platform 
is really going to give you a one unified baseline of your data. So allowing you to unify your sales, marketing, service, potentially uh, operations teams all in one database. So you have things like shared contact and company records um, that gives you really like a single source of truth. And with that, you can share context between your teams. So often you'll have maybe your sales team in one, um, one tool and your marketing team using a variety of other, um, other softwares in their tech stack. And that causes teams to be siloed and have differing information. Um, and then with this, with HubSpot, you'll be able to have all of that in one place. So a shared source of truth um, that allows you then to organize and track and communicate with your prospects and customers. So a couple of things that I called out, our team specifically utilizes these chat bots uh, and live chat a lot and how we engage with our prospects, but there's a number of different tools and ways that you can do that. So here is an example of one of the contact records and what it actually looks like within HubSpot's user face. So it gives you that align, it aligns your teams on a single source of truth um, and it reduces your total cost of ownership because you have that consolidated record. Um, so you can see everything about the contact or company record in that left-hand column. And then in the center is the activity timeline where you can see all of the different meetings um, and call notes that the sales team's having, as well as any of the ways this contact is um, interacting with your marketing content. So website page views, how they're engaging with marketing emails, forms that they're submitting. Um, so a ton of powerful data within this. And then to highlight one of our hubs, uh, our marketing hub. So the benefit of having your marketing tools on top of that CRM or powered by the CRM, it really allows you to ensure that you're creating a customized experience for, for your prospects and customers. So with the marketing hub tools, you're able to attract, convert, and delight prospects and customers, uh, and then have some really strong reporting on ROI as well. Um, so here's a couple of the tools that we have available within the marketing hub. So you can host your blog and website, manage your social media, and create holistic marketing campaigns using um, marketing automation, A-B testing, et cetera. I'll show you a couple of um, screenshots of those tools in the future slides. And we have a huge uh, community with HubSpot. So we have over 150,000 customers in over 120 um, countries. We have a massive community of engaged users and customers. Um, we host an inbound conference each year that generates 70,000 attendees. Um, and we have a ton of integrations that connect with HubSpot um, including Supermetrics. So Anna's going to be telling you more about that integration in particular, but we have tons of integrations um, that can make HubSpot even more powerful. We have a growing number of household names that are choosing HubSpot each day. Some of these will be familiar companies for many of you. So how can you succeed with HubSpot? There's a lot of different ways, and it really depends um, on your company's needs, which is one of the, the great things about HubSpot is how customizable it is. But some common customer pain points um, that I'm curious to hear uh, if you all are experiencing as well, uh, we often hear that uh, companies are feeling like their teams have a lack of consistent use of systems. So it, the ease of use of the system really impacts the ability to adopt um, or to get people to actually adopt and use those systems. Um, a lack of shared data, like I mentioned, having um, different, uh, different systems that aren't connected causes that lack of shared data, which then impacts our ability to create personalized content uh, for our, our leads and customers. So out of these three, I'm curious um, to hear from all of you, which one is the biggest pain point for your company? So you should see a poll pop up um, 
curious to hear which of these three is the biggest pain point for your company. Give people a minute to answer that. All right, the polls are back. Not sure if you all can see that on your side, but it looks like uh, the biggest pain point here uh, for folks in the webinar is lack of shared data, um, but definitely seeing around 57% of you um, are having that as a pain point. I'm sure it's difficult. Uh, you're probably experiencing a lot of these. Um, so lack of shared data. Yeah, we hear that a ton. Um, and as I already shared in the previous slide, um, the benefit of HubSpot is having that uh, single source of truth and having those shared contact records and data all in one place. Um, and yeah, We've seen, especially through the pandemic, um, that the buyer's journey or the customer's path is really no longer linear. People aren't going from visitor to customer. There's many touch points and buyers are more uh are researching and doing their own uh, online research before actually talking to someone at your company, um, very much more so. And there's multiple touch points. We have to really create a customized journey for each of these prospects um, to be successful. And the benefit of HubSpot is, again, having those shared systems and having your marketing team have that information from your CRM is going to be hugely important to um, creating that really customized user journey. So some examples of that, um, these are some screenshots from directly in the product. Uh, you can use data to segment and target your audiences flawlessly. So taking that information from the CRM that's updated in real time to create these segmented lists and then use those lists to create personalized ads and emails um, for people in your database. You can also leverage automation to nurture contacts and hand off warm leads to your sales team. So this is our workflows tool and there's countless ways that you can automate um, things from handing off leads to nurturing uh, people for a webinar or, or certain campaigns that you may have. And then lastly, reporting and optimizing uh, on your marketing efforts. So here's an example of a dashboard that a marketing team could put together to show all of those different touch points and marketing initiatives, bring them all into one place so that you can report on your ROI. All right, that's it for me. I'm going to hand it over to Anna to talk a little bit more about how you can use HubSpot uh, and Supermetrics together. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Erica. And with that, I'm going to continue and talk more about reporting. So like Erica mentioned, HubSpot is a very, very powerful tool, which means that it has a lot of data. And apart from HubSpot, there, are an, there is a number of other platforms, and each of them also has a lot of data that you need to process. So this is the current problem Supermetrics solving. We take data from multiple platforms. You can, like you can see on the screen, there is Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, Shopify, Adobe Analytics, Google Analytics, TikTok, and transfer this data to various data destinations. Spreadsheets like Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel, your business intelligence tool like Looker Studio, Tableau, Click, or Power BI, or then you could also transfer the data to data warehouses like Google BigQuery, Snowflake, or Azure Synapse. And that allows to then store data in a secure place and then be able to transform it and then visualize it later on. So imagine Supermetrics acts more like a pipeline tool, taking your data from different marketing sources and bringing it to a number of destinations. And we are currently processing 15% of online ad spend globally, like you can see from this slide. 
We are also top ranked software products on G2. And just like HubSpot, we also have solutions big brands are using. So you can see there are different well-known brands as well as household names. And now I will talk more about HubSpot in particular and how you can use your data and bring it to full potential with Supermetrics. What you can see on the slide is our add-on for Google Sheets. And you can see there is a number of sources where you can bring the data from, like Facebook Ads, Facebook Insights, and you can also see HubSpot in this list. So we help bring data from Marketing Hub and the CRM. It can be spreadsheets can be other BI tools or data warehouses like you could see on the previous slide, but this is how it works. You can pick a different, you can pick different connectors and then bring your data to a destination of your choice. And not just that, you can also really cherry pick which data you want to get to your report. So for example, here you can bring amount one or maybe the number of leads or maybe all the information about your emails, about your contact cycle from HubSpot to Spreadsheets or Looker Studio, for example. So you can create reports which allow you to zoom in and answer a particular question with your HubSpot data. Or then you can imagine, then as you can imagine, you can build a whole big overview report that helps you combine data from different platforms, including HubSpot, and then create a complete overview how your marketing is performing. And I will talk a little bit more about the use cases as well during this webinar. But now we will talk about destinations more specifically, meaning where you can bring your data to and how you can improve your HubSpot reporting with that. So we have a number of different destinations. For example, let's take Supermetrics for Google Sheets. With that, you could answer very specific questions like I've just shown you, really cherry pick your data, pull everything into a spreadsheet and then select which metrics and dimensions you want to query. After that, you can create a calculation layer, say maybe you want to see the drop off, how many contacts, turn into leads and then turn into your loyal customers. So you can easily do that with the help of formulas in Google Sheets. And Supermetrics is a great tool to bring your data to Sheets more specifically. You can also store large amounts of historical data, perform complex data transformations by pulling your HubSpot data into a data warehouse, like you've just seen. You can pull it to Google BigQuery or to Snowflake, and then later on visualize it in a BI tool, for example. Or you can also create an interactive client-facing dashboard with Supermetrics for Google Data Studio, which is now called Looker Studio. And this is a very visual tool. This is a very client-facing tool. So you can really show your client how their HubSpot campaigns are performing with a combination of these two products. And now let's talk a little bit more about common reporting pain points. So we have a number of challenges here. For example, some people are struggling with choosing a reporting tool. So should I build my report in Excel or maybe Looker Studio or a completely BI tool like Power BI, for example? Another very common challenge that I see is people do not know what kind of metrics they should be reporting on. There are lots of metrics we can export from HubSpot. There are lots of options to choose from, from purely monitoring metrics like amount won or amount lost to all your contact lifecycle information. So how do I put it all together in one report that's not too overwhelming for my audience? And then the third pain point is how do I analyze this data? So how can I analyze this report and come up with an action plan on how I can optimize my campaigns later on? And now we'll have another poll and I want to hear which of these pain points is currently your biggest pain point, or maybe which one of these will be your biggest pain point. You, if you think you will want to try work more on your reporting processes, what sounds more challenging? And I'll give everyone a couple of minutes to answer. 
And then we're going to take a look at the results. Feel free to also post your questions in the Q&A chat at the same time if you have something to ask about this. All right. And now we have the results. So 22% answered that choosing a reporting tool seems to be the biggest reporting pain point. 41% are concerned which metrics am I supposed to report on? And 38% are also worried about, hey, how can I analyze this data? So second and third point got the biggest number of votes. Okay. Great. So this is good because now we're going to talk more about report examples. So hopefully you will also get some understanding and inspiration for your HubSpot reporting. I understand it can be challenging. So how do you get a complete picture with supermetrics without making it to feel overwhelming? First of all, what can you do with all your HubSpot data once you start reporting on it? It doesn't matter what the destination is at this point. First of all, you can create a very use case specific dashboard. For example, you can say, hey, I really want to see how my email marketing is performing or how my content is performing. So I want to get information from the content hub or you want to maybe pull all your lead lifecycle information and then build a report based on that. So pick one use case, make it very specific, but you will have all the data to report on it. Second popular report our customers built is the portals report. So they're combining data from multiple different portals on HubSpot into one report. For example, if each client has a portal, then you might want to create a master dashboard where you would be able to see how each website is performing. And then another very popular use case is the master dashboard one where you combine different HubSpot data with metrics coming from Google Ads, Google Analytics, Facebook Ads, et cetera, to create a very comprehensive overall marketing performance dashboard. So maybe you're running some campaigns on Google Ads and you want to see how these leads have converted and how you're nurturing these leads using data from your HubSpot CRM. So in this case, you might want to create this very comprehensive dashboard. And to show you how these reports look in practice, for example, this is a HubSpot email marketing performance report, which is built using Supermetrics for Google Data Studio, again, now Google Studio. Another way to build it is also to get your data into, say, a data warehouse and then connect it to Looker Studio and visualize it this way. Here we can see a complete email marketing funnel. So we have the number of sent emails, how many were delivered, and then later on, how many emails were clicked on. You can see the name of each and every marketing email campaign, and then when it was sent, and then how many people have clicked on it successfully, as well as the totals. Then you can also change the time period, as you can see in the upper right corner, and then maybe drill down into specific marketing campaigns performance. So this is one very good example of a use case report. Another one I wanted to show you is the overall marketing performance report. Here you can see the whole content lifecycle funnel from subscribers to leads to sales qualified leads all the way to your best repeat buyers. And here you can see the whole funnel as well as analysis by sources, how many contents were created, and then what was the keyword match for each of those leads or subscribers. The next one is our content marketing performance report. So here you can zoom into your blog page analytics, see how many page view sessions and then leads you gotten after people read your blog post. And then at the same time, you can see the whole content marketing funnel 
performance. So how many page views, contacts, and customers you've gotten after people have looked through your content. And next we have our cross portal performance report. Again, here you can see the content lifecycle funnel. And in general, how many sessions, page views you've gotten for a specific portal, or maybe you can choose one or multiple portals at the same time. And at the same time, you can see what was the amount that you won. You can also pull in the amount you've lost and then the recurring revenue amount. So really drill down into the performance for each portal on a financial level. And now I will also tell you more about the success stories that we're hearing from our customers. So don't take this from me and take it from Marie Kerman, who is a digital account manager at Gravital. Gravital is an agency that wanted to achieve 100% reporting automation and reduce the time they spent on client reporting while getting all the data, not sacrificing the report complexity, and at the same time, combining data from HubSpot with data from other marketing channels. So they were creating manual reports, and they spent two hours per month per client for each report. And the goal was to, like mentioned, automate everything completely, and then combine HubSpot data with data coming from other sources as well. As an outcome, Mary could really combine all their clients' marketing and sales data to one centralized location and then have it for all analysis and reporting that they needed. So Supermetrics helped not only bring the data all together, but also change their entire business model. So they were able to scale to something beyond just marketing or digital marketing and become actually data-driven performance marketing. And this is something that I also see with other customers of ours. They start by automating their queries and getting all the data into the report. And then as a result, once that's done, they get a lot more time on their hands so they can spend this time with their clients, really listening to their pain points and thinking how they can improve on these reports instead of just copy pasting data or trying to figure out how they can export CSVs from a particular system. And now we will also want to hear from you. So you will see a short survey popping up on your screens now, and it will stay. So you will be able to answer it as well. And I'll also give a couple of minutes for people to answer. And then we will continue to hear more about the sweet deal and other exciting things we have prepared for you. So stay with us. Wait a little bit and with that I want to also hear from Erica whose oh. team has prepared a really really nice deal for the webinar attendees today. Yeah, thanks, Anna, uh, and thanks for everyone who attended. So HubSpot's offering um, a sweet deal for all of you. Um, so you can get started with any of our tools for free. Um, there'll be more information, so keep an eye out on the emails following the webinar to get uh, more details on the terms and conditions and to actually get this um, this specific offer. But you can get started with the free tools or we're providing a 20% discount uh, if you upgrade to our paid products. So please let us know if you have any questions about that. But again, um, more details to follow in the webinar follow-up emails. Yes, and it's an amazing deal. I highly, highly recommend starting your hopes for journey with that. And uh, also we couldn't leave you with without a deal from the Supermetric side. We are also offering a 15% partner discount on our super package for the HubSpot connector. So you can try it out and then see which data destination works best for you, which product works best for you. Again, Keep an eye on the emails after the webinar to see the discount code and how you can use it. 
So you will get started with both HubSpot and Supermetrics and be able to use the deals to build your whole reporting funnel. And with that, we can then go to the Q&A section. Erica, you ready to answer some questions? Amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so uh, first question is, uh, we already have a couple of answered questions and then we'll see, let's see which questions got the most upvotes. So the first one is ETL versus reporting tool are two different things. One lets you operationalize the data, helps you make static decisions from the data. How does HubSpot and Supermetrics working together help operationalize the data in automation? So yes, Indeed, ETL and reporting tools are two different things. So you can, the, the really good thing about Supermetrics is that, like mentioned, you can pull the data into any data destination of your choice. So if it is something you want to look at on a daily basis, say day to day, you want to check how the number of your contacts or leads has changed or what were the results from the marketing email campaign you've launched yesterday. You can pull this data, zoom into a particular campaign and track these numbers on a daily level using tools like, again, Looker Studio or even a spreadsheet. That's very, very quick to create this query and then quick to get results and then act on these results. So that's more operational point of view. If you want to have more of a general overview if you want to again maybe analyze your data on a deeper level see the relationships between different data points then one very popular tool the customers use is our data warehousing solution so they can pull data to a data warehouse make a number of transformations and then pull it again to a looker studio report but then spend more time analyzing this data and then uh, again, the data is fully automated. You don't need to set up queries. You do not need to copy paste anything. You can spend all this time instead analyzing it and then drawing the conclusions that will impact your strategy in general. So you can really analyze data on different levels, both on more strategic level and both on a more operational level. And the next one, I believe, is for HubSpot. So here we have a question from Alvin. I work for a digital transformation company, which we're working with HubSpot implementation. And he would like to know what are the best selling points for startups and insurance companies? Thank you. So Erica, I believe this is a question to you. What are the best selling points for startups and insurance companies when it comes to selling HubSpot solutions? Yeah, thanks for the question, Alvin. Um, so I'll speak specifically to the startups, um, and then Caitlin can share some of our case studies as well. Um, but HubSpot does have, I know there's a question below that too about startups. Um, HubSpot has a program called HubSpot for Startups that you can apply for. Um, and that actually allows startup companies um, that are eligible for the program, and we can share some details about that, um, to get discounted pricing. Um, and that kind of grows with the startup. So the it's a really significant um, discount for eligible startups to help them grow uh, in the early stages. Uh, for those companies. And then um, in terms of the selling points for HubSpot for insurance in particular, um, I think we can share some, some case studies for that. Um, but I know there's a lot of insurance companies that use HubSpot um, currently. And yeah, we could share some resources. Yeah. Perfect. Another question is, uh, what's the best destination to start with for a startup company? And then I guess, Erica, you and I can both answer this question. So from Supermetrics perspective, the best destination would most probably be a Looker Studio or Google Sheets, depending on what you want to do with your HubSpot data. Google Sheets helps you create really nice reports and when you're in a startup, the data volumes are typically not too big. So maybe that would not just justify the need for a data warehouse, for example, but still you can really 
like I mentioned earlier, operationalize your data. And then at the same time, you can build really nice reports in Looker Studio if you want to build more client-facing reports. But then what's the best hub to start for a startup company, Erica? Any thoughts on how people should get started with HubSpot? Yeah, for startups, we typically say that our CRM starter suite is the best place to start. So we have levels of HubSpot. As I mentioned, you can mix and match the different hubs that you utilize on top of the CRM. Um, but we have a CRM starter suite, which is just above our free version. Um, and it's $45 a month. That's a really good space to start out and get a baseline of the different hubs. Um, or like I mentioned, also exploring the HubSpot for startup um, program and seeing if you're eligible for that. Um, but really depends on the business needs. Um, and the starter suite is a good place to kind of test that out. Perfect. And the next one was, are the templates available somewhere? Yes, very good question. So we have them on our Supermetrics website. If you go to supermetrics.com and then to resources and data studio templates, you will find all these templates there. And then maybe another question to Erica on this note, do you have any good resource hub for people where they can turn to and find more resources? Yeah, um, we have a, a community that Caitlin can share a link to, um, and that's a good place to continue to ask questions of HubSpot users uh, and customers. We also have an academy where you can take free courses and get certifications, um, and then tons of online content and resources through HubSpot as well um, by just going to our website. Yes, fantastic. Are there any options on how to automate reporting in PowerPoint? Technically, I would say I wouldn't recommend automating reporting in PowerPoint for a couple of reasons. Uh, a, you can automate your reporting in uh, Looker Studio or as it used to be called Google Data Studio. And that's a great option because you will get your data updated there automatically. And you can schedule your emails to clients so they can receive an email with a dashboard already. And at the same time, you can also export your reports as a PDF and then share them as a PDF, which would be more like the PowerPoint format you're aiming for. And here we have a couple of words about the challenge. So metrics is consistency and availability. Yes, this is very true. Is there a super metrics plus HubSpot package that includes performance marketing data sources, Google ads, analytics, HubSpot email, et cetera, or is it purely a super metrics license that needs to be purchased within your super metrics account? So our sales is more than happy to help you with a custom package. So of course you can reach out to us or then just request a demo and my colleagues will be, will be able to happily join the call, answer all these very specific questions about the connectors, pricing point, and any other details you want to use within your license. Is there anything from the HubSpot side, Erica? Is there- I just typed in, I just yeah. shared a resource. Um... I type the answer in there that just gives you um, the details on the integration between HubSpot and Supermetrics, um, which includes what level of HubSpot you would need, as well as Supermetrics to give you more details there. Yes, perfect. Thank you so much. So please make sure to follow Erica's links to the resources, and then you will get an email from us where you will be able to get in touch with our colleagues as well. And another question was, can I combine my data from Google Ads, LinkedIn Ads, Google Analytics, HubSpot into a data warehouse? Yes, just like I mentioned. And you can see on this slide as well, you can move it to a number of different data houses. Of your choice, there are different ecosystems, Google BigQuery, Snowflake, Azure Synapse, and Amazon, as long as others. So you would also be able to check what kind of level or maybe permissions you would need from my colleagues, be sure to follow up with an email. And that I believe is it for the Q&A part. Thank you very much for all your questions, really good questions, very interesting ones.
And uh, a very quick mention from my side as well, HubSpot has a community. We also now have launched our Supermetrics community where you can, again, ask questions, get in touch with us, or get links to all the resources mentioned in this webinar. And you will be able to see all the webinar recordings, maybe past webinar recordings, and get invitations to all the upcoming webinars. And uh, with that, we will complete our webinar. Thank you so much, Erica, for joining me. Thanks for having me. It's been great. Thanks for yes. all your questions. Um, and looking forward to doing future webinars together. Amazing. Thank you very much. And thank you, Team HubSpot, for also helping us. I also learned a lot. And this was very insightful. So have a great you. day, everyone. Bye.